Hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to make a mug from a slab of clay. So we first have our clay that's been rolled out and now I'm going to use one of my tools to start smoothing it out on both sides. I want to make sure I want all the texture to be off of that clay so it's nice and smooth. I can use any of the wooden tools or even one of the sponges. Then we're going to take one of our mug templates and put it onto the edge of our slab and we can trace it with either a needle tool or one of our wooden tools. We want to trace all the sides of that template so that we can get the pattern that we're going to create our mug out of. Then you're going to take that template off and you can use one of the pottery knives or the needle tool to cut that piece out. Once you're done cutting out your mug, then carefully remove all the extra clay and set it to the side because you'll need that for later. What you can do now is focus on smoothing out the edges of your mug. So you can take a sponge or your finger and a little bit of water and just smooth out all of your edges on both sides so that no parts of your mug will be sharp or pointing out when it dries. Once you're done smoothing out your clay, you can take a little bit of your extra slab, which we're gonna make into our handle. Start to squish it up a little bit, but you may need to add a little bit of water to your hands. I take a tiny bit on my fingers and start to smooth it around my hands so that they glisten. If you make it too wet, your clay will start to get real muddy real quick. So this technique is called coil making. And so you can do this by either rolling the clay around in your hands or you can roll it on the table and you move your hands slowly outward as you roll it. But make sure you use light pressure when you do this so that the coil remains nice and smooth and it doesn't become bumpy. Once your coil is long enough, you can measure it against the width of your mug because that's how tall your mug is gonna be when we put it together. So you wanna make sure that you have enough coil to make a big enough handle for your mug and to fit all of your fingers in. Start to shape it the way you want and it will either look like a candy cane or kind of like an ear. And then when you're ready, you can cut it with your pottery knife at an angle or you can cut it with your needle tool. Once you're done, carefully set it to the side without warping the shape of your handle. Now, if your slab for your mug is still really wet and flexible, you can carefully hair dry it for a couple of seconds to firm it up a little bit. And you can test it with your finger. If it leaves a lot of fingerprints, you can hair dry it for a little bit longer. Now we can start experimenting with our carving tools and our ribbon tools on that extra clay that we put to the side. We can take our wooden tools and experiment with what kind of marks they leave with the side and the top. We can try out different tools that we have inside of our toolkits. Even the back end of paint brushes and things like that can make some really interesting marks in the clay. Our ribbon tools can also carve away clay really easily and there's different sizes and shapes of them that we can test out as well. Simply turning our tools to different angles can make some really interesting marks that we could use on our clay and in our mugs. And these experiments can help you figure out what kind of texture you want to put into your mug. I'm going to be using one of the small wooden tools and carve in some fine lines that look similar to branches or maybe even something else that's growing. I'm holding my tool at an angle and not straight up and down. That way I won't get any weird ridges when I draw onto my clay. I can add as many or as few of these branches as I want. Then I'm going to start using one of the carving tools to create different leaves going across the branches that I created before. And I'm simply pressing and slightly pulling that carving tool away to create the little leaves going across the branches. I'll do that across all of the branches that I've created on my mug pattern. Now remember, you can create any pattern that you want on your mug. If you wanna do some abstract designs, if you wanna write words or your name on it, you can do any type of pattern or texture that you want on your mug. It does not have to be one that I am making. Now I decided to add a few more details 
like bubbles or berries using the back end of my wooden tool to create some more dots in some of the empty spaces. I also took my wooden tool and created some lines in some of the other empty spaces on my mug as well. When you're all finished carving in your design, if your clay is still wet, you can hair dry it a little bit if you need to, because now comes the time we're going to start to put it together. Carefully lift up your clay and start to curl it around until it starts to look like a cup. And now we're ready to start to put our clay pieces together by connecting the sides of our cup. But first let's get a towel and carefully set the cup onto it. Then you're going to need your liquid clay or slip, which is in that cup. You're going to take your wooden tool and start to scratch the edges of your cup that we need to attach together. This technique is called slipping and scoring. You also need to scratch and score the other side of the cup that you're going to attach together. So carefully take your wooden tool and scratch up both edges. Then you can take an old paintbrush, mix up your slip, and then start to dab it on to the edges that you just scored before. Make sure you put enough slip on both edges so your cup doesn't come apart. Now you're ready to carefully attach those two sides together by squeezing them slightly overlapping so that that slip starts to ooze out the sides. When it oozes out the sides, you know you have a good connection. Make sure you're pressing on both the inside and the outside of your cup. Then you can smooth away any extra slip and even smooth out some of the edges with a little bit of water. I like to take a paintbrush and a little bit of water and run that over the seams where I connected the sides of my cup. I can also take my sponge and help to mop up some of that extra water I used, and I can actually even out the rim if parts of my cup were a little bit uneven when I attached them. I can also take my ribbon tool and I can carve away any extra clay that might be a little bit annoying for me to see on the edge there. I can smooth things out with both my fingers and with the sponge. If there's any areas that are going to be a little bit rough, I can make sure that I smooth it out so that everything's going to be smooth after it goes into the kiln. Now is also the time where I can just inspect and make sure that everything is looking good on my cup. If there's any surface cracks, I can just smooth them out with my finger. That is no big deal. I can always go back in and re-carve things that may have gotten a little smushed when I put it together. All right, so now is the time to make the bottom of our cup. Carefully set your cup on top of the extra slab of clay and then trace the bottom of it onto your clay with the wooden tool. Set your cup to the side and then carefully cut it out with your pottery knife or your wooden tool or your needle tool. Set any extra clay to the side, smooth out the edges of the bottom of your cup really well, and then you start to score just the outside edge so that we can add slip and stick it to the bottom of your cup. Go around the entire edge and really scuff up that outer edge with your scoring. Carefully take your cup, turn it over, and scratch up the bottom edge with your wooden tool. Once you have the entire thing scratched up, take your slip and start to dab it on the bottom of your cup and on the circle you just cut out. Once those two are covered with slip, carefully press them together using your fingers. Go along the entire edge and make sure that that slip starts to ooze out the bottom just a little bit. Once that is all connected, you can take your sponge or your fingers or even a wooden tool and start to smooth out that bottom edge of the cup. You want to make sure every part of the bottom is smooth because if there are any parts that are rough, it could scratch your table once it's gone into the kiln. 
Then, if you don't feel like waiting for the bottom of your mug to firm up, you can hair dry a little bit to speed up that process. Make sure to rotate it as you dry it. Then, you can flip it over and smooth out that inside seam with either a little bit of water or a little bit of slip just to make sure that it's good and connected on the inside as well as the outside. You can take a wooden tool and run that across the inside seam and then make sure your rim is nice and round. Now we're ready to connect our handle to the side of our mug. So let's check and see where our handle lines up along the side of our mug. I'm going to carefully line up the handle and mark with one of my wooden tools where the connection points are for the mug. Then I can scratch into the side of the mug with my wooden tool, both the top and the bottom, and then I can do the same with my handle. Both the top and the bottom I'm going to scratch up, and then I'm going to add my slip to both the handle and to the points on the mug body. And now we're ready to attach. So holding the inside of the cup, I'm going to press on the handle at those two spots until the slip oozes out. Then I wanna make sure my handle is nice and straight and make sure it's well connected. I can test and see if all of my fingers fit, but don't ever hold it by the handle. Don't hold any cup by the handle until it's been fired in the kiln. Then I can take my paintbrush and a little bit of water and just clean up any of those edges that have a little bit of the slip on it. Here I'm just making sure that my connections are really well made and that my handle is nice and straight. Then I can take my hair dryer if I want to firm up anything that is still a little bit wet or flexible. Make sure you write your name on the bottom of your cup so that we know whose is whose. The final step is to simply clean up anything that you need to on your cup. So make sure that your rim is nice and round and smooth. Make sure that your connection points are well connected. Any surface cracks you can smooth out with your finger or with your sponge. You can even take your wooden tool and re-carve some of the things that you might want to. Your sponge can be used to smooth out any and all pieces of your mug. Once you have cleaned up and you're happy with how your mug looks, you're ready to set it to the side to dry before we put it into the first firing in the kiln. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you're excited to make your mug.